Can you point to Uruguay on a map? The country is tiny. It has the area of Florida, the GDP of Idaho, and a population of 3.5 million, around the same size as Connecticut. But check this out. They are really, really good at soccer. They are one of five teams to have won the World Cup two times or more. They've also won the South American Championship, or Copa America, 15 times. That's more than any other country, including Brazil and Argentina, who have a combined population of 250 million. So how can this be? What's in the water in Uruguay? Well, a lot of it can be explained by these two factors. One, it's a national obsession. Perhaps no nation on earth is as passionate about soccer. But the arguably more impactful reason? Uruguay's early willingness to include players from all socioeconomic and racial backgrounds in their national soccer program. The first and most obvious answer is passion. Soccer is part of Uruguay's national identity. Joshua Nadel, author of Football, Why Soccer Matters in Latin America, puts it this way. It is incredibly important to the national sort of imaginary that soccer was this sort of crucial thing in the construction of a, of a national identity to oppose Uruguay to, say, Argentina or Brazil. They're not going to, like, defeat Argentina militarily. They're not going to defeat Brazil. Um, so what do they have got? They basically have soccer. In Uruguay, soccer transcends politics and navigates its way through every part of society. This is one of the most popular songs in the nation's history. Cuando juega Uruguay, or When You Play Uruguay, by singer Jaime Ruz. But what built this passion? For that, we can look into the nation's economic policies of the early 20th century. The crowd is much like a baseball crowd in the United States. One reason why a visitor from the States feels at home in Uruguay. The fundamental and important reason for that feeling is that Uruguay has a large middle class. Soccer's early days in Latin America were defined by divide, quite the contrast from the sport's European beginnings. It's interesting, because in, in Europe, soccer is really a working class sport. Um, in Latin America, it started out as an elite sport, right? Because, again, all those people who wanted to sort of whiten the nation, along with sort of importing people, you were importing the ideas of Europe, you were importing people from Europe. Uruguay was no outlier. Soccer was first introduced by Englishman Henry Castle Eyre in the second half of the 19th century. These early teams were mostly comprised of Uruguayan-born children of Anglo-Saxon parents. But this began to change when they elected reformist politician José Bache y Ordóñez. Bache y Ordóñez presided two terms, from 1904 until 1907, and again from 1911 to 1915. He introduced widespread political, social, and economic reforms, such as the first welfare program in Latin America. The state-controlled school system reaches every child, even those in the rural areas. Education is free, and it is also compulsory. A hospital, a fine one built with public funds. Here the poor receive free medical care, including the services of doctors and dentists. Prior to Bache, Uruguayan football trailed behind its neighbors. But now, the Uruguayan economy was booming and its middle class was growing. The effects of these policies trickled through society and into the sport of soccer. The government invested in schools and physical education programs. Soccer fields were built in every neighborhood. The growing middle class was playing soccer. Students at the University of Montevideo founded the world's first criollo team, Club Nacional de Football. Later, a union-like team of railroad workers hit the pitch, Club Atlético Peñarol. In Uruguay, soccer was for the common man. While its larger neighbors like Brazil strictly prioritized white, affluent players, Uruguay's national team was becoming more inclusive. Meet Isabelino Gradin and Juan Delgado, the first black players ever to appear in an international tournament. And they did more than just appear. They were major contributors to Uruguay winning the first South American championship in 1916. From there, Uruguayan international success took off. They won the South American championship in 1917 
1920, 1923, 1924, and 1926. These teams were not built from the societal elite. Pedro Asripe was a meatpacker. Jose Nasasi cut marble, and Pedro Sea sold ice. In 1930, they took on the world in the first FIFA World Cup and won. Their best player, a carnival musician named Jose Leandro Andrade, AKA the Black Marvel. While the exact cause and effect of Uruguay's early success is hard to pinpoint, experts say that its early economic policies and racial inclusivity played a key role. Since 1930, Uruguay has gone to win 10 more international championships, most recently winning the Copa America in 2011. They've also continued to churn out world-class players like Diego Forlón, Edison Cavani, and Luis Suarez. So, you may not be able to pinpoint the country on a map, but now when you think of Uruguay, you'll likely think of soccer, a national identity built by passion and policy. Thanks for watching. Tell us what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe.